this by doing two sides at the measurements we need. After that, we go right at the bottom and then just slide it right through. After that, we do it from the top. And then I sort of just go like this. And it just falls right out. And that's the block for the igloo? Yeah. So when you bring the animal back from the land, you'd bring it back out here. Um, and what's next? We usually just store it up. Um, but once we catch a caribou, we usually um, take the fresh meat and cook some of it. OK. And the rest, we just store it up right in here in this meat sack. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Can feed a lot of people with that. Yeah, I can feed the whole entire town. The majority of the meat that your family would consume is stuff that you've gotten here out on the land. Yeah. It's actually pretty much healthier because the store-bought food are processed, and we don't really know where they came from and what they put in the processed meat. Because once we catch the animal and use their meat, we actually really respect the animal. When it comes to hunting, it's like being able to be free. And so we've seen the meat here. What happens to the skins? Keep them for our sleds. Why is it important to have skins on the sleds? So that it would be a lot softer once we're on it, or so that we don't usually really damage the sled. We usually store them in a sack so that it wouldn't be buried under all the snow. We have a uh, muscat skin on the top because we usually use it the most since it's more soft and more durable than the caribou skins. So this is the best kind of, of fur or skin to use on the Comatex? Yes. Wow. Underneath here are caribou skins. They're pretty much like the muscat skin, but they're thinner and harder. But what about, for example, with the caribou, with the head and the antlers? What happens to that part of the animal, and how do you use that? Sometimes we use the antlers so we can make a fishing line. You so can make actually a fishing line with the antlers from the caribou. Yeah, we can actually make them like a fishing rod. This one here is called the ice chisel, and it's pretty basic. And right here is the blade where we actually hit the ice with. The rest is just completely just for handling so we can hold it and hit the ice with it. Let me show you another tool. This is actually called the scoop. That's what I call it. It's used to take out the ice that's broken inside the hole. So the first step would be to break up the ice with this. Yeah. Then it's left with sort of a hole with all the chunky slush and ice. Yeah. And then this is what you'd use to get that out. Yeah, sometimes the ice is too thick to put our hand in and to scoop it out with our hand. But uh, Robin, it's usually minus 30 or more here. You're telling me that you would put your bare hand into the water and take the ice out with your bare hands? Yeah, and to me, it's kind of soothing. It's not too cold for you? No, it's not too cold. It's sort of like a cold summer day. 